we'll start over from the beginning of the tenth chapter. Um, as we've pointed out multiple times, you know, many times over the over the past two years or so, um, the chapters are really not, they're not from our sources. The chapters are sourced from, again, some monks somewhere at some point took our book and added chapters to it. So um, they do not always necessarily align with um, where I would put a natural break. Um, in fact, as we've mentioned also multiple times, the book of Kohala, the book of Ecclesiastes doesn't actually have many breaks. If you were to look in the actual text of the, if you were to look in a handwritten on, on parchment version of the book of Kohelet, of the Megillah of Kohelet, you'd find that it actually does not have many breaks at all. Um, so the, uh, the breaking up of the chapters is not necessarily where we break up um, concepts. Uh, and that's what we find in this, this is another great example of that, where the end of the last chapter, the end of chapter nine, is unquestionably related to the beginning of chapter 10. Um, I have no clue why they even felt that there was a, be a chapter break there, but that's what we got. Okay. So uh, without any further ado, let's jump into the share screen. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Before I do that, as I forgot, almost forgot to put our link in the chat. Give me one second. So uh, yeah, there's that. Okay, now we can jump into the share screen together and look at our text. Okay, so if you recall, the last things we've been discussing, the end of the ninth chapter, has been a discussion of this very difficult thing, uh, something that King Solomon himself notes as being a very difficult thing, something that he takes personally. Um, and what that was uh, is what we identified as being this, uh, what we have been referring to as uh, cynical irreverence. Okay, so it's different than uh, questioning authority or anything like that. There's something to be said about questioning authority. There's something to be said about um, uh, I hope you can see this. I just got a thing. Everyone can see this screen? Yes? I can see it. Okay, great. I just want to make sure. Okay. Something popped up on my screen. I wasn't sure if it was telling me you can see it. Okay, great. Um, so again, there's nothing, There's I wouldn't say there's nothing wrong, but in general, there's the, it, it's not a bad thing to you know, question uh, uh, something you hear and to keep your an open mind and things like that. Those are not bad things. However, there's a whole different story when you get into this cynical irreverence. That means you don't even consider the fact that there's, there might be something important here. You don't even consider the fact you take something very serious and you just throw throw it to the wind. Okay, uh, that is a much more dangerous experience, much more dangerous problem. And he's he's coming from the perspective of wisdom. So again, this is if we're talking from the point of view of the the wisest of all people. So he he personally feels. Uh, you know, offended is not the right word. Triggered is not the right word. And he personally feels just this it goes so against everything that he works for. So King Solomon's working towards this goal of spreading wisdom to us and, and, and enlightening us and how where to find wisdom. And you can have the wisest person of all time or or the greatest class you've ever heard or anything like that. But if somebody says something at the wrong moment or somebody just kind of throws it away or throws it under the sun, uh, under, under the bus, I'm sorry. So that under the sun, see where see where my mind is, um, you know. Uh, so if you, you just throws it under the bus, that could undo all sorts of wisdom. You know, I, I remember talking to somebody that I was once uh, I wasn't very friendly with these people, um, but I was talking about something that I had personally uh, gotten a lot of um, inspiration from. And it was a it was a, a psychological concept that had really uh, helped me and guided me in certain things and. The guy said to me, oh, that, that's just pop psychology. I was like, why do you say that? You know, I got something out of it, you know, so you don't like it. Okay. You know, but when you say something, just the simplest of, of comments, you say, oh, that's, uh, that's nothing. I don't believe in that stuff. It can have a disastrous effect on somebody who is gaining something from it. So wisdom, again, wisdom being the, this kind of weird, mostly objective, but Potentially subjective. There's a lot of there's a lot of subjective in it. I would say, um, so something that's so subjective, and then you have somebody who just kind of throws it out, and that can have a disastrous effect. Again, we we also identified last week that this was the trait of our our mortal enemies, uh, the Amalek, 
All right. The uh, who, you know, we, we don't know who they are or what they are, or whether they're uh, conceptual or, or actual or anything like that. But uh, that's the, that's the trait that is um, in conflict with the Torah lifestyle, with the wisdom lifestyle that we try to, to live is that life of or that that mindset of just cynical throwing away things without or throwing caution to the wind without um, considering that there may be something some wisdom there. Okay, so again, that leads us directly, once again, into this first verse. Okay, we saw the verse last week, but it's, it's we only got part way into it. We didn't have enough time to give it proper, uh, it's proper due. Let me make this just a touch bigger. I think it could, yeah, it looks like it could. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, he says like this. <clears throat> again, this is chapter 10, verse one. Svuve mavet. Okay, that's a it's just it's all a strange phrase, kind of a long phrase. It means dying flies can spoil the flowing source of spiced oil. Okay, a lot of a lot of words there. So again, dying flies can spoil the flowing source of spiced oil. I'll, I'll explain that piece by piece as we get. As we go, but after we go, after we finish the verse, it says, Yakar mechachma mikavod, and heavier, more impressive, so to speak, than wisdom and honor is sichlut ma'at, is a small amount of foolishness. Okay? So again, let's read the verse one more time, then we'll take it apart piece by piece. Zvuve mavet, the dying flies, or the flies of death, okay, the flies of death, um, yavish can spoil. Yabia, the flowing source of shemen rokeach, of spiced oil. Yakar mechachma mikavod, and more weighty, more impressive than wisdom and honor is sechlut ma'at, is a small amount of foolishness. Okay, so again, let's just take on some of the grammar pieces over here. Um, so I, if I were to look at this at first glance, I would say zvuvei mavet would be flies of death. All the commentaries here say that zvuve mavet are flies that are dying. I don't know why that's true. Um, it, I don't know what the difference is. You know, it's a it's a parable. It's giving you some sort of uh, uh, some sort of storyline to follow, some sort of picture to to put in your mind's eye. Um, it you know, it's I would think dying flies would zvu, would be zvuve metim. Um, this mavet makes it as a, uh, as a, um, as almost a different form of adjective. Okay, so a zvuv is a fly. Let's clarify that. A zvuv is a fly. Mavet, the source there is, the, the root word there is mate, mem, tet, uh, which means death. So mavet is death, um, uh, as like a noun. So this is death flies, which again, all the commentaries are learning are, is that it's flies that are dying. Okay, I can, I can live with that. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, in the in the storyline, uh, whether it's flies that are dying or flies that carry death, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. I would assume a fly that is carrying death is also dying. I don't know if that's true. Let's let's stick with that. Okay. Um, Yav ish. So baash is a bet ayin bet aleph shin. I'm sorry. Uh, means to spoil. Where else do we find that? Um, there are a number of places where you find it. It's almost exclusively if I'm thinking, thinking through it's almost exclusively a case uh, used in the in the terms of a liquid spoiling okay so it would be different than uh, sarach which would be um, which could all, sarach is kind of just a catch-all term for anything spoiled samach resh resh chet uh, baash is almost exclusively by a spoiling liquid um, so we need a liquid that can spoil which is where we're going to get our spiced oil uh, yeah, bia. Uh, this word is also it's 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 not an uncommon word, but it's not that common of a word, I guess. Uh, it's a slightly common word. Yeah, bia. It, it means it's the idea of flowing, of bubbling. Bua, that bet and ayin uh, construction there uh, gives is a, is actually the word for bubble. So many bubbles. It's baabua. A bubble is a baabua. It is something that bubbles up. Um, so it's it's something going through the surface of a liquid and popping out. So when something's when something um, 
flows, a, for example, if you have a flowing river, it's also referred to elsewhere as a nachal novea, okay? A, it is a flowing river. Uh, another case of that would be, um, we say, the, the verse in Tehillim tells us, the verse in Psalms tells us, um, yom liyom yabia omer, that from day to day, it, it, it flows with speech, okay, referring to the, to either the words of Torah or the song, or what we'd have to discuss to, to heal in Psalms to, get, to understand what that verse is talking about. So again, it's this idea of flowing, but it's more than flowing. It's almost like bursting. It's bursting out, okay? It's a liquid that bursts out. Um, why all these interesting adjectives and verbs by this case, I'm not 100% sure. Why is it spiced wine? Spice, not wine, I'm sorry. I keep on saying, I keep on thinking wine. Usually things that are spiced are wine. This is shemen rokeach. This is spiced oil. Okay, so we have these flies that are causing a spoilage to spiced oil. Okay, different opinions about what exactly the bia, ya bia is over here, whether it's that the oil is flowing, but yet nevertheless it gets spoiled. Another explanation that I saw was that it means ya bia shemen rokeach, meaning that it spoils it and it causes this oil to bubble. So a, a spoiled liquid will often bubble. Well, you know, it will ferment and it will cause bubbles to pop up. Anyway, it doesn't, I would say, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. It definitely does matter. Um, and in fact, I would say that probably we should put a little more thought into what the mashal, what the parable is over here. Um, but the general sense is that, and this is a way, and this is how all the commentaries explain it, is that you can have a oil. So oil, we don't think that much about oil nowadays, right? We just buy a jar or buy a bottle of olive oil. But in, old, in, in older times, oil was a very important um, ingredient, not just for food, but also that's what they have, that was their, their way of, of, uh, uh, of, it was their perfume, it was their, um, their uh, lotion, all sorts of things like that. It was used for all, all sorts of things. So let's say it's a perfume, okay? So you have a, and that's actually what the word over here would, it would indicate, shemen rokeach, would indicate a perfumed oil, a, an essence, uh, some sort of a perfume that we're, that, that he has. So a perfume, what could, what could go wrong with the perfume, all right? It doesn't smell good, whatever, but, you know, you just put a little perfume on, what, then you don't think about it. But depending on what's happened in the process of this oil, of this, oil, this perfume will change, you know, it could be poison. And that's the point over here. We have these flies carrying death or flies that are dying, okay? I, 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 I personally, I can't understand why everybody else says it's flies that are dying. To me, it seems more likely that it's flies that are carrying death, um, death flies. So, you know, um, uh, also, you know, we would talk about uh, it, it, flies carrying disease. You know, so it's a fly carrying a disease that goes and settles in or, Again, the commentaries say it dies in the oil, let's say. So it kind of disappears. You know, you scoop it out, end of story. But it's not because it was carrying, who knows, right? You know, we, we, we dealt with, uh, you know, Europe, the, the whole world <laughs> dealt with Black Death in the, uh, in, in, you know, previous centuries. That was rats. But flies, I mean, flies, I'm sure it didn't help. You know, <laughs> um, so you have this thing. It looks perfectly normal. The oil doesn't look anything, nothing's wrong with it. But the fact of the matter is some other outside sources come in and spoiled it and made it actually, it turned it into something very dangerous, okay? You would not want to put that on your skin, okay? It's contaminated it's beyond the point of use at, at that point. It's yavish, it's totally spoiled. So in the same sense, we have chokhmah, we have wisdom, which is like this perfume. It's, it has so much power, it's so potent and everything like that, but somebody could come from the outside like a, like a fly and just drop a little bit of poison into it and that ruins the entire thing. And con concluding with this, the nimshal, the explanation of the parable is yakar mechachma mechavot, more weighty. Okay, yakar is, is an interesting word. It's usually used to mean precious. Uh, it doesn't always mean precious. It literally means, so it literally means heavy. Okay, yakar. It's its own shorash. It's its own root word. Yakar means heavy. Um, and in the same sense, so we have like another verse, the verse that we say in Tehillim, 
in Psalms, which also shows up in the Hallel. We say, Yakar me bene Hashem hamavtala chatit l'chasidav. Right? Yakar, it is Yakar in the eyes of God, the death of his righteous. So Yakar could either mean precious, which would be a very strange thing to say. It's precious to God when his righteous die. No, it means that it's heavy. It's weighty to God, meaning whatever that means, that's a subjective human experience. But the way we perceive it is that um, that, that God experiences some sort of, uh, it's weighty. It's a big deal when a righteous person passes away. So in this sense also, it's a big deal. A small amount of foolishness is a bigger deal than wisdom and honor, okay? Where wisdom and honor are something that you have to work hard to overcome, to get, or not overcome, to achieve. You want to, you have to put a lot of work into gaining wisdom, into establishing a, 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 to, to have respect, to get people to respect you, you have to go through all these steps in order to gain those things. In one moment, a little foolishness can undo all of that. So it's your car. It's actually in a certain sense, you can even read it as more precious. It's more precious. A little drop of foolishness, a little drop of silliness can ruin an entire vat of wisdom and honor, if you will. Okay. In the same way that this dying, this fly of death can come and ruin the um the the shemen or kach, the perfume, so to a little bit of foolishness to come and ruin wisdom. Okay. Um it's interesting because if we looked at the previous verses, let's see, let's just pull up for a second. We said in the previous verses, the end of chapter nine, we said um uh here we had two verses. One said uh where is it? There it is. Here we go. Tova chachmami gvura. Wisdom is better than strength. We had another verse that said, Tova chachmami klikirav, that wisdom is better than um, weapon, than, than, than tools of war, okay, than weapons. And we, we, we translated that, we, we understand that, understood that was that wisdom is actually, it supersedes, it's over, it has no need for strength. It has no need for 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 uh, tools of war, here we have a different ver a different. Uh, what is this? This is a uh, adjective, I guess. Right? It's not that it's stronger. It's not that it's better. It's more powerful. It's more potent. So a little bit of foolishness is more potent than uh, wisdom and and honor. Uh, it's interesting just to point out over here what the sages say. They point out uh, in just a kind of a, what would seem to be an offhand comment. The sages point out in the uh, Talmud. Uh, elsewhere, that the the evil inclination, if you will, right, the the desire that people have uh, to do what's against the will of God, that is uh, compared. They say, look, it's compared to a fly. Um, okay, and that's all they say. They stop there. Look, you know, the evil inclination is compared to a fly. It ruins some. It ruins uh, things. You know, um, the the Vilna Gaon uh, from this from the uh, 18th century uh, big. Big rabbi, he points out over here in this in this idea that a, a that the the evil inclination is compared to a fly, and the fact that flies don't come, they don't attack, they don't uh, feed on healthy meat. Right? If you have a piece of meat sitting out, that's not going to attract so many flies. When do things attract flies? When they're rotten. Um, so if something is rotten, if a person is rotten, they're all that's when they they are more likely to be affected by the evil inclination. Okay. Again, that's kind of a, you know, I don't necessarily want to talk about the evil inclination so much, but if a person's in a bad state, they're much more likely to be at risk of, of doing things that they shouldn't be doing. I think that's, in fact, I've read recently that that's, that's clinically, you know, uh, empirically proven that when people are not regulated, when their emotions are out of check, they're much more likely to do things that they don't, uh, with, that are, are in conflict with their set of values, okay? So if you're upset at somebody, you know, you're much more likely to do something that you would not have done otherwise. That's it goes against your value system. So I think that's that's a pretty simple idea. That's just to, to get a sense of what the sages say over here. That's how they learn this flies. They say it's referring to the evil inclination. In the sense of what we're learning over here, it seems much more that we're talking about this idea that a little bit of foolishness can undo, a little bit of silliness can undo a whole lot of wisdom. 
okay? Or the cynic cynicism can undo a lot of wisdom. That's an important point. Okay, so that's to finish off last week's verse. And that moves us now into this week. We're beginning with verse number two. Okay, halfway through the class. <laughs> so, um, wait a second here. And this is a fascinating verse. You hear, I will, you hear it quoted all the time. Uh, different people get different things out of this verse. Um, we're going to understand in the context of what we're saying over here. And it's a very simple verse. It says, Lev chacham limino. The heart of the wise person is to their right, the right hand, you know, pointing to the right. V'lev kisil lismolo, and the heart of the fool is to the left, okay? The heart of the wise is to the right, heart of the fool is to the left. Now, that's not to that say a left-handed person is a fool or anything like that. That's not what we're saying at all. Um, it is interesting to note that uh, even going back to the Latin roots, um, in Latin, they understood that the right hand was dexter, so dexterous. If a person is, is skillful, it's with the right hand. If a person left hand is sinister, right? So it's it's there's something wicked, evil about the left hand. Uh, in, in in Jewish kind of liturgy and things like that, the right hand always refers to some sort of aspect of kindness. Uh, the left hand is always a little more rough and tough. Uh, if if you get into uh, sort of Jewish Kabbalism and things like that, you'll you'll end up with God, the, the, the aspect of the right side of God, which God has no sides. I want to make that clear. God has no physical attributions or anything like that. But whatever we would refer to, whatever we perceive as the right side is is kindness. And the left side is din, is, is, um, is judgment, okay? Again, talk to somebody who's much more knowledgeable about that stuff. Um, so here we also have the same kind of idea over here. A wise person goes going to the right. A, a foolish person goes to the left. Now, that again, well, different people get different things out of this verse, right? You could just say it's that a, a wise person is uh, is is led in a some sort of skillful path. Again, the, the foolish person is is being taken to some other side. I don't know. I don't know what different people get out of this. Um, I was actually very interested in the explanation that's brought down the Suda. Uh, who's one of our go-to commentaries, um, he says a very interesting thing. He says that the way he puts it is the heart, a wise person keeps their heart on the right side, meaning easily accessible, right? Right, you know, it's in their right hand. A fool keeps their right, their heart, their meaning, your heart meaning your intellect. He keeps his, he, he, he keeps his, his intellect or a fool keep their intellect on the left side, less accessible, accessible. They, they, they enunciate that word, less accessible. So it's a bad question of, do you access your wisdom or not? A wise person or your intellect or not? A wise person is got, ha, they've got their intellect at right, right there on the surface, ready to go at all times. A fool quiets their intellect, puts it to the side, uses it when, when they need to, it's available. But they don't busy themselves. They don't busy their mind with things throughout the day. Um, so in that sense, he's telling us that there's a difference between a wise person and a fool in this sense, that a wise person is always thinking, is always going to keep their mind going, um, is not, gonna, not going to just go and, and decide to quiet their mind and put things away. Now, not that quieting the mind is something wrong either. Um, that's a meditative practice. But in that sense, sorry, in that sense, it, what it's saying is that a wise person keeps their mind active. Right? We've seen that we know this now, again, uh, scientifically, we understand that people who do crossword puzzles, for example, they keep their mind busy, they have a mu much sharper mind as they as they go, as they age in life. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you're a crossword or my, Myra. Yeah, so uh, I personally love crossword puzzles myself. Yes. Um, so doing things like that, or even just memory games or things like that, you're going to keep yourself much sharper. Uh, I was always impressed when we were in yeshiva. Um, so we were we were involved in some pretty heavy thinking for many, many hours a day. Um, we were studying Talmud and uh, very, very intense study for, for again, uh, we, our, our, for our day started at 7.30 and ended at 10.30. So that was, a, it was a long day. Um, with some breaks in the middle, but it was a long day. Um, and it was always exciting to sit by the lunch table because since our minds were like on fire, uh, 
um, from just thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. So you couldn't stop it. And I remember just, just seeing guys and we would have like these deep philosophical conversations about anything, about the orange juice and about the ketchup and about the salt. And it just, you couldn't stop it, you know? And, you know, uh, and, and it was always fun. I, I just, uh, I had a friend who did, who one time just stopped in the middle of the, the lunch and said, we just spent the last 15 minutes talking about, you know, something inane, but with a real depth to it. So in that sense, you know, a wise person, I'm not saying a wise person, I'm just saying like I was around people um, and it was it was interesting to note that people who keep their minds active are going to end up being wiser. Uh, people who, who, who shut down their minds at a certain point, they just kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll have accessible, but it's not really what I'm doing. That, that person ends up becoming or is much more likely to be foolish. So in that sense, Yamin, the right hand, is is a is accessibility right so it keeps it right here on the right side of the body but whips it out whenever they need it whenever they have whenever they can and a fool has it all the way over on the left side you have to pull it out all the way from the left side okay so that, that's the sense that's what the mitsuda points out as as the meaning of this verse over here so why is it over here um is an important question why is this verse stated over here um, and I think part of what he's doing is he's explaining to us what are the what is the nature why is it that some people end up one way and some people end up a different way why is it that some people end up being interested in finding wisdom and and giving respect where it belongs and then other people end up being the type of person who you know just cynically throws away something um, that who becomes the cynic. And the difference, again, is who is accessing the wisdom. That's part of what he's saying over here, is that if you want to be the first person, the wise person who learns from wisdom, so then you want to keep your mind active in the process, um, as, opposed to, as opposed to the cynic. Um, let's say something. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, so... Uh, what's interesting over here, and so now we brought back the word kasil. We brought back the word fool. We've talked about the kasil many times. Kasil, again, being the fool, and the sense of the word kasil being that somebody who's stuffed up, right? Their ears are stuffed. They've got this layer blocking their minds from picking up more information. That's what a kasil is. So um, that's the word that we're using right over here. But we had a different word up here of sechel. Sechel meaning a fool, meaning also silliness it's almost a different type of silliness but it's still a it's it's a different type of foolishness i'm sorry it's it's silliness more than foolishness okay <laughs> you know those are different different things and as we know in hebrew those the the, the distinction is going to be important um but what's interesting so we had in the last verses in the last chapter we had kasil showed up over here okay then we had chote which was a sinner which we said there was a reason for that is there Kind of a veiled reference to to um, to Amalek. Then we have Sechel show up over here, Kisil over here, and now in our next verse we're going to have Sechel come back. And it's just interesting to note that he's switching back and forth between different terms. So what's up with that? Why is that happening? Well, we'll, we'll discuss that in just a second. Let's see the verse number three. That's going to be our last verse for today. Okay, so he says Gam Baderech, and also in the way. That the silly person walks, libo chaser, their heart is is um, lacking. Va'amar lakol sachal hu, and it tells everybody that they are a fool. Okay, uh, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's just take it piece by piece once again. V'gam baderech kishes sachal holech. Also on the way, as the fool walks, libo chaser, their heart is diminished, the Amar Lakol and tells everybody, tells to everybody, Sachalhu, that they are a fool. Okay. Now um, let's just first address the, the elephant in the in the verse over here. The the fact that the word is written two ways. It's written one way. So if you were to see again, if you saw it written in the in the in the actual scroll, it would have the hay in there. Kishe ha sachal holeich. But when we read it, we actually take out the letter hay. So that's what this is over here. When you see it in parentheses, 
the parentheses is how it's written, and then it's read without it, okay? What we call a kari kasiv. It's kari, it's read this way, but it's written that way, okay? Why? Uh, so that's an important question. Uh, and we've had that all over. We've had that all over a number of different places. It's come up a couple times. Um, the Torah itself, you know, the five books of the Torah, does it all over the place. It's all over the place. Um, and why that happens is a good question. But, and, you know, you get to a certain point with the Torah where you say, well, it wasn't written by mankind. So, you know, you kind of have to just, you know, you can learn things from it, but in general, it's, it's, it's the will of God. You know, you're going to end up with a little bit of a, of a question of, I don't know, you know, you can just say, I, I don't know. Um, you could, I'm not saying that you should, I'm just saying you could say that. Here, it's written by King Solomon. So he wrote it one way with the intention that you read it a different way. I find that very interesting because there's no difference in the translation, right? Uh, in the way that the fool walks, their, their heart diminishes, okay? In the way that a fool walks, their heart diminishes. Like, what's the difference? It, it, it's, and in fact, I wouldn't even read it as a fool. I, I would read kish as as that the fool walks. So nothing was lost when we took out the letter A. It's just simply, uh, it's not there. We don't need it. So but why is that? Why did he write it like that if we don't need it? I think there's a point over here that he's just kind of a... Um, like a side, a side kind of a, 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 a you know, a, a poke in the in the in the uh, ribs to the fool uh, from King Solomon over here. Uh, again, fool is not the silly person is what we're talking about. A silly person. He's uh, he's saying that the fool becomes foolishness. Okay, it's not. You can't even distinguish between the fool or the silly person and the silliness itself. They embody their 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 trait. They become their trait. Um, so, it, whereas in the last verse we had the Ksil. So the Ksil is 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 a is a person who, if it wasn't for the fact that their mind was closed, they'd be they'd be have access to wisdom. They they are they do not embody foolishness. They are foolish. They don't let themselves learn. They don't let themselves study. But a sachal is a whole different person. When somebody becomes a silly person, becomes a, a clown and or a cynic or something like that, then it, it becomes, it takes on a whole new, um, it becomes who they are. So it's not, we don't say the foolish person. It's just the, the, the foolishness. The person is the foolishness. That's kind of how I read it. Um, could, could be there's another explanation. It could be it's nothing to worry about. I'm just saying that that's how I kind of saw the difference over there of when we took out the hay, we took out the the uh, definer that it's the fool and just said the fool. Uh, it just says that this, or again, fool is the wrong word. This cynic, when we say that this cynic goes uh, in the way that the cynic goes, their heart uh, diminishes. They are the, cyn the cynicism. They become the cynicism. In fact, I would even say that's kind of, I mean, I think it's kind of true. When somebody becomes a cynic, when somebody uh, stops giving reverence to where it's due, it becomes who they are. They have to make into their personality, into their persona. They have a hard time distinguishing between it. They, everyone looks to them at a certain point and says, oh, somebody just said something. You, you have a comment back? You know, it becomes who the person is. So I think that's an important point um, also that, you dig yourself into a person can dig themselves into a hole like they're the guy who questions everything well as soon as you don't people are going to have questions on you why aren't you why aren't you doing your thing you know so i think that's kind of a a uh, another uh aspect of the fact that it, it it's a persona that the person creates they become the sakhal so again that was just a side point. let's see what the verse is saying <laughs> and that was just something in the in the way that it's written and and and, and read but they definitely what the what the verse is saying is like this: as a person, as as this silly, as a cynic person goes, their heart diminishes. Okay, um, I I think that the part of the idea over here is what does it mean to go? What does it mean that on the way that they're going, um, when this when this cynic is going somewhere? I, I kind of the way I, I kind of looked at it is that the way that a person goes is, is generally, that means that the way that they're progressing. Um, so the, the meaning of the, the phrase, 
and the way that the such and such a person is going, such and such happens. So that means as they progress, that can mean either as they try to get better as a person, it can mean as they continue on this path that they've chosen for themselves. I think it, I, at first I was thinking that, um, you know, I think I, looking at the verse now, I think what it's saying is as they progress down this, down this path, as the person goes and turns, let's say they're turning from a kasil, from a fool, into a sakhal, into a cynic. Okay, so as they progress down that path, their heart diminishes. Okay, so that heart that was on the left side in the last verse, they notice there's a heart here, a heart there, right? So the heart, which they have already put to the side, they don't have it accessible. They keep their heart, their intellect, they keep it to the side. As they progress in this way towards cynicism, towards total irreverence and becoming, taking on this persona of a sakhal, their heart diminishes to the point where they don't have access to it anymore. Their heart stops being a uh, a battery for wisdom at all. Okay, they can't they can't take on any wisdom. They they refuse to take on any wisdom. Uh, they they lose the capability. So again, their heart diminishes. Chaser, by the way, just the the construction over there. Chaser is an active word. I mean, it's not that it's not libo chasar that the heart has diminished. It's a constant action of the heart diminishing as they continue on this path. Their heart will continue losing, their intellect will continue losing power over the time. Okay, so that is that seems to be what the what the verse is saying over there. Okay. Um, and the, the finishing is the kicker over there. Vamar la kol sachalhu. And it says to everyone that they are a sachal. Now, both in Hebrew and in English, there's two ways to read that to, to understand that. The way I just I just translated, and it says to everyone that they are a fool. They who, who they, right? Is it the that the person is a fool, or that they are fools? So, um, meaning that the 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 people that they that see them, uh, is it the kol or is it the sachal? Basically, which one's the object, and which one's the subject? And it says to everyone that they are a fool, okay, or that they are foolish. So the most of the commentaries understand it in the sense kind of which I would say is more the simple, the, the, the surface level says that and they say, it says to everybody that this person is a fool. Their actions, the way they act and the way they, they, they walk around and they progress and they, they make connections with people and talk to people. Everybody knows that they're foolish. Everyone knows that they're a cynic. Everyone knows that they're not to be trusted with wisdom or as a source of, of anything. Okay, in that sense, it's kind of like that idea of better to keep your mouth shut and uh, have everyone think you're a fool than to open up your mouth and uh, prove them right. Right. So in that sense, it's the same thing over here. They're so, they so embody this this silly cynicism, this irreverence that everybody knows. If they walk into a room, everyone says, "Uh oh, here they're here. You know, <laughs> we're we're in trouble. They've 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 come." Um, Right, so that's that's how a lot of the commentaries explain Vamar la Kolsa Kalhu. Just their their demeanor says to everybody, "Oh, we have here a fool." Okay, the the sages again they they say a great line. Uh, it's kind of a almost a throwaway line in the midrash over here. They say that the fool they use the word tipesh, which is another word for fool, which we haven't actually seen. It's kind of the the more Talmudic ver version of a fool. A tipesh, and it said this day in Hebrew, in modern Hebrew, it's a common, common word for just an idiot, a moron, right? So tipesh um, thinks that everybody is a tipesh, everybody else is, 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 an, 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 is an idiot, but he does not know that they're all smart and he's the idiot, right? So I, I just, first of all, I love the line, right? In Hebrew, it's a tipesh savar the chol ama tipshin hain. The fool again thinks that everybody else is the fools and doesn't realize that he's the fool and everybody else is, is, is wise. Everybody else is smart. Uh, just a good, a good, a good message. You know, there's this old story of the uh, guy gets a call from his wife. He's driving on the, he's driving home from work one day. And she calls him frantically and she says, you know, just letting you know, there's a there's a crazy guy on the bridge driving the wrong direction. So watch out. He says, one guy. Oh, they're all driving on the wrong direction, you know. 
So, um, <laughs> uh, so that I mean, that's definitely a, a feature of the fool is that va'amar lakol. They say everything sachalhu. They announce that everything is foolish, right? They have no sense, no ability to accept anything. So everything just becomes a joke. Everything becomes silliness. Everything becomes irreverent. There's no point in revering or giving respect to anything. So that's the type of person that we're talking about. So again, it, they gave a a, 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 a he, he, he worded the phrase in just the right way that it, ha, it contains both meanings. Everything about the person's demeanor says that they are sachal, they are silly, that they're a cynic, that they're a fool. And the nature of a fool is to say that everything else is foolish. Everything else is silly, is, is, has no purpose. Okay, so those both those lessons, that's one of the cool, fun, fun things about the book over here is that he's now said two lessons in one. Um, it, it, yeah, so uh, anyway, so that's, that's it for today. That was, again, this is chapter 10, verse number one, two, and three. So now we're making a little headway into, into chapter 10. Um, continuing with this idea that um, it's one thing to have humor, it's one thing to be lighthearted and to, um, you know, have fun. It's a whole other thing to be a cynic, to be a, a, a somebody who takes nothing seriously. I take nothing seriously, then you're, 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 you're in trouble. You're not going to, you don't just, you're not just a fool who can't hear things. You turn into, you can embody, you can become this new persona of the sachal, of the cynic. Okay, All right, let's take us back to the main session here. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh...